Garza, thank you for giving me the opportunity for, for the interview. Can you start by talking about your recent uh, tournament at the Grand Slam in uh, Tokyo? How was your experience and what has really motivated you to compete, compete there and to uh, work on your rankings? So first of all guys, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. And uh, I, it's not just about the Grand Slam, but I, I decided to fight all the events of the UAE Jiu-Jitsu Federation. Uh, I'm, I'm 34 years old and I was 35 in this year, in October. So that means I'm supposed to be fighting master for five years. But I believe because I always have a, such a good lifestyle, you know, I always put a lot of details on the techniques that allowed me to you know, keep a fight for the young boys. And I decided to put this uh, challenge in my life and to see how I can do in the, on this uh, ranking. So for, I, will, I will do my best until 2016 and the next World Pro Cup when that's going to finish the, the rank. came to the UAE to compete over here in Alain. Um, uh, talk about your experience competing over here in Alain and uh, do you plan to come back and compete in other events over here in the Emirates along with the, with the international events? Yes. Uh, I, my, as I told before, my plan is to fight as many events as possible. And I, I fought in Tokyo. I got like second on my division and I got a third in the open division. I, fought, I lost both by advantage to Ebert Santos. He's the boy fight every weekend, he's doing really good. And I felt, you know, the nine months out the mat, out the game, I felt a little bit. And I pushed, you know, I started pushing hard. Uh, I moved to, I decided to fight here in, in Alain last weekend to try, you know, to push the level and to see what I have to fix in my game. It was very, you know, important because I realized a lot of things I have to work, not just technical-wise, but on my training, you know, my physical training, a lot of things. And I will fight the, the trials in Portugal, in Lisbon, on 3rd of October, and I'm thinking about to fly to straight from Portugal to, to Dubai and I believe I'm going to be more uh, well prepared for that one. Uh, I, I like to think about it, these events like the surfing, you know, the WCT. For example, the guys, sometimes the guys start, you know, in the ranking with low, you know, very low points and the venture is the guy who wins. You know, it's the, the ranking, we don't have to think, the Jiu Jitsu players, they think a lot about one tournament. You know, it's like, it's a long road. So, I'm warming up, i just coming back. I'm not doing bad, but I will do much better and pursue this for the next uh, uh, coming event. Now, uh, Lagarto, uh, you've competed in every single major event and you've done quite well for yourself. At, a, at one point, you were considered to be the favorite to win the Worlds in uh, California. Can you talk about why uh, you do not compete in the U.S. anymore? Or well, you haven't competed in the U.S.? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, I've been fighting the world for many years. I got my black belt and I lost, you know, twice for Shandy Ribeiro when the world was back in Brazil. That's many years ago. And since the world moved to America, I tried to get my visa and I never you know, be, I never got it. I got my first visa, my first redact, the denying visa to America was after the World Trade Center. I don't know, but since then, they still reject my visa, one after the other. When you mention about, you know, uh, my name was one of the favorites to win the world, I have to hold my tears because that's my dream, you know, is a dream for every uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, for every Jiu-Jitsu guy to win that, that title. And when this take from you, you know, 
uh, and you don't have a chance even to try, that's quite a sad. You know, I overcome a lot of things in my life, you know, and but that's something really uh, frustrates me because that's, you know, is a big part of my history, you know, it's a big part. They, because the guys deny my visa without even checking my papers, they just look at the computer and deny my visa, reject my visa. They stop the history of someone, you know, always supporting the people, always motivating people, you know. And I'm quite sad about it, but I'll not give up. Now I have the uh, LA Grand Islam, and I, I will have spoke with my lawyer, and I'm gonna try again. I have seven reject visa. In the worst scenario, I'll have eight, but I will not give up. Now, Lombardo, can you talk about your dynamic guard game? Uh, can you talk about, because you are, you are a big guy, and usually um, you see a lot of guard game played by the smaller, smaller athletes. Can you talk about how you came to develop this guard game? Yes, um, because my, where I came from, Grace Barra, you know, uh, I always saw a lot of guys playing guard. I grew up in, the, in that environment. So I have like guys uh, like Roleta, you know, Pedro Pano, you know, all these guys. And I always try to play guard, you know. And I, I believe it came from, from that time. And I believe that good jiu-jitsu fighter, they need the guard, you know. And I was, all my life, I was a very skinny boy and very weak. So most of the times I end up in bottle and people smash me. You know, I was quite tall, but very skinny, you know, surf boy and the people always want to bully me. So I'm, I had to make, I know I had to work my guard to, to be able to, to survive against the big boys. Can you talk about your involvement in Fulham and how in your academy and how it has played a part in the competitive scene in the UK? Uh, yes, um, my school is in the Grace Barra Fulham in London. And me and Roger, we are the straight guys from Carlos Grace Jr. You know? And all these guys, you know, Brown and Victor. Also, but Brown and Victor is more north of the UK. Me and Roger is quite a close. Actually, used to work together because Ro Roger actually he brought me to to London. I used to live in Preston, where I have a school, Grace Barra Preston, also. And Roger went, he he brought me to London, and then since then we start to work together. I worked with Roger for two years, and then eventually I opened my school, as in Grace Barra Fulham. And they can see, you know, how the jiu-jitsu is growing. You can see this from the Europeans. Every year, they have more people. And I believe the jiu-jitsu, you know, for the next five years, is going to be something like one of the, the, the biggest sports. I believe it's one of the biggest sports growing in the world. Now, uh, somebody starting new in jiu-jitsu, this is like on an end note, somebody starting new in jiu-jitsu, what would you tell them in order to encourage them to continue training because you know so many people pull out after the blue belt white belt level what, what advice would you have to give them? well a lot of people they they have a very small challenge you know they have a challenge to become like his friend and or he he want to be better than the best guy of his academy but he don't think about to be better, to don't, he don't th never think about to be better what he can achieve. You know, so rather than he try to be better than his friends, I think they should, he, they, they should think about it, should give his best or as a human being, as an athlete, as you know. Take this as a, a challenge every single day. If you start to compare yourself to somebody, you're always going to get frustrated, you know? And I believe in the beginning it's normal that happened. But I believe for you to succeed well in the Jiu-Jitsu, we have to look at this as a lifestyle, you know? Thank the Grace family, 
everything I do, I think about my health. That's why I don't use any drugs. That's why I eat so clean. That's why every exercise I do, I think about how that can affect my life in the future, you know? I try to do always things outside and I always try to do the best for those around me, you know? So these elements, I believe, you know, gonna take you for a long path in the Jiu-Jitsu. If you just think Jiu-Jitsu is on bar, triangle and chokes, is a completely wrong. Jiu-Jitsu is a lifestyle. You know, Jiu-Jitsu is not a martial arts at all. You know, that's a completely different. That's why it takes so long to be a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. If you really train in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you're gonna understand what I'm telling you. It's something can change your life. But you have to look at this from your heart. You know, cannot look at this like uh, something. A lot of people wanna, okay, I wanna do a jiu-jitsu, I wanna get my black belt and, and that's it, you know? Forget about it, you know? Just look at this as a lifestyle. Well, thank you so much for the interview, Ricardo. It's my pleasure, you know? And everybody who's watching, you're more than welcome to come to my academy. Grace Barra Fulan. Was...